And so we've been talking about different songs through this book, and we're going on our fourth one this week. So grab your Bibles and go to Psalm chapter 91. Go to Psalm 91. Some of you already know what Psalm that is. You memorized it growing up in Sunday school. You heard it on Veggie Tales. You remember a couple of teachings on it. We're going to talk about it today. Psalm chapter 91. As you're going there, why don't you look at the person next to you and tell them, I'm so glad you're sitting next to me today. Come on, smile at two, three people around you. Look at the person on the opposite side, the one that you turned to the second time. You thought about turning to them first but didn't. Turn to them now and tell them, I'm glad you're sitting next to me as well. Come on, 1 p.m., are you, are you ready? Everybody ready to have some church? There's an awesome one. I got Kenny and Amy up here in the front row looking amazing. They're an amazing couple and we love them dearly. Psalm 91. Psalm 91. If you're watching us online, welcome to Calvary Church. We're glad that you're connected all over the world. Every single week, we got hundreds of people watching. And so we love you, all of our friends and family online. We're glad that you're here. Come on, can we give them a big welcome? All of our online church community, we love you. Psalm 91, we're going to put it up on your screen as well. A few weeks ago, we started with Psalm 1. Psalm 1 was the first song that we talked about, and it's a song of wisdom. Uh, second week, my wife shared on Psalm 23. Come on, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That was a beautiful song that David wrote that we have to this day. Last week, we talked about Psalm 51. Everybody remember last week? It was a song of repentance. David has been caught in sin, and he writes this song where he's asking God to forgive him. And how many know we need to repent daily? All of us fail all the time. So David gave us the blueprint on how to repent and be sorrowful over our sin because God is a good God to us. Today, Psalm 91 is a song of confidence. It's the song you want to play before you go to battle. It's the song you want to play before the big game. It's the song you have in your headphones as the cameras and the lights come on and you know there's a fight of faith. Psalm 91 is one that is going to increase your faith, enlarge your heart, make bigger your vision, and believe that there's a good God for you. Psalm 91, we're going to read all of it because it's a short chapter. Follow along the screen. This is good. Every line is like bars on bars on bars like underline it highlight it this is good for your soul psalm 91 he who dwells in the shelter of the most high will abide in the shadow of the almighty i will say to the lord my refuge and my fortress my god in whom i come on won't be it my god in whom i trust for he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence, he'll cover you with his pinions and under his wings you'll find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge, no evil shall be allowed to befall you, no plague to come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up lest you strike your foot against the stone. You will tread on the lion and on the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Verse 14, 15, and 16 are promises God speaks to us. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation come on how good is psalm 91 come on let's give god a praise anybody thankful for that song that's a good song it's a good song to memorize to get in your soul and that's a good song to sing this summer and i know you could be singing despacito or the latest hit but i think this is a better song that brings faith to our soul it'll help you in times of trouble It'll bring healing to your soul. Today, I want to talk out of Psalm 91 for the next 20-something minutes out of this message that I've titled, The Secret Place. The Secret Place. Look at three people and tell them, i got a secret place. I have a secret place. The secret place. Let's pray, and then we'll talk about Psalm 91 and 
and what it speaks about the secret place. And then uh, we'll worship once again at the end. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you. We love you. Thank you for this 1 p.m. service. Thank you for the incredible day we've had so far. Thank you for every service, every gathering, 9 a.m., 11 a.m., and now this 1 p.m. Thank you for everybody watching online, locally, and around the world. People are connected. God, we thank you for this big community of faith. We pray that today you would show us who you are in your word. Holy Spirit, speak. Holy Spirit, heal. More than anything I can say, more than anything we could hear here in this room, we need to hear from heaven. And we need your voice and we need your healing. And I pray that as service is happening, you're freeing hearts, healing hearts, healing minds. Today I believe that there's hope for the soul, healing for the soul. Holy Spirit, minister to us as we see God in a new way, in a new light, because you're awesome and good to us. We love you. We thank you. It is in Jesus' name, all of God's people say. Yeah. Oh, come on. All of God's people say. Yeah. Can you make some noise for Jesus one more time, 1 p.m.? Come on. It was in the year 1942 that the Nazis had already invaded Amsterdam. Perhaps you've seen it in movies. You know a little bit of history, and you know what's happened with the Nazis and their invasion of Europe. In the city of Amsterdam, there was a family that was afraid because they were of Jewish descent. And the Nazis were trying to obliterate the, Nazi, the, the Jewish people off the face of the earth. And so in 1942, this family decided to hide in a secret place of their building, and they went into hiding for 25 months. They had a young daughter, 13, 14 years old, that for her birthday, right before they went into hiding, she received this journal, this diary that she began to write in, and it became known as the Diary of Anne Frank. This young girl, 13, 14 years old, though she was in the middle of chaos, though she was in the middle of war, if they were to be found, if somebody were to hear them, see them, betray them, their life would literally be getting ready to end, yet in the secret place, she had an imagination, she had some friends, and she was able to dream for 25 months and write down stories, thoughts, dreams, ideas in the secret place. Because when you find a safe place, it doesn't matter what's happening around you, there's something different happening inside of you. There's something about a safe place place it reminds me of a game we used to play when I grew up in my neighborhood not long ago about two years ago um, called hide and seek anybody remember hide and seek did anybody grow up playing hide and seek yeah. hide and seek uh, the purpose was to go and hide and once the person that counted was done and went out to look for you you had to run and try to make it to base, base home base because once you got to home base, you were safe. safe, safe. In fact, I don't know about you, but I used to get excited when I got to home base. You let the whole neighborhood know you made it back to home base. I used to get back to home base and be like, I'm safe, made it, didn't catch me. Because I knew that while I was running around my neighborhood, whoever was counting, they could grab me, tag me, I would be out. I would be exposed to everything that was happening. But once I got to home base, I was safe. There's something about a safety place. There's something about a secret place. It does not matter what's happening around you. Once you get to that safe place, your soul is at ease. Your heart is at rest. Much like the middle of a war, much like a game of hide and seek, we are living in a world that wants to bring you down, wants to bring down your mind, your heart, your soul. We're living in the middle of a, literally a war of the mind, a war of worship, and there is a real enemy that wants to come after your heart and your soul. We are living in times of uncertainty where we have no idea what may happen tomorrow. We see tragedy. We see accidents. We look all around the world. We see viruses. We see things going on. And if you're not careful, it will get to your heart. It will get to your mind. And all of a sudden, you'll be living in anxiety and fear. Because I believe this, a life full of uncertainty will produce a life of fear. 
And so today we have so many people living in fear because a life is, all of a sudden, it surprises you. Life is unpredictable. You'll get a phone call you weren't expecting. You'll get a text that you never thought you would receive. You'll wake up and you'll see something on the news that you never expected. It's turmoil, it's chaos, it's tragedy, it's grief, it's tears. Life is hard, life is difficult, and it produces fear in our lives. And I think a lot of people living in today's world are living in fear. And they don't have a safe place to go and find some rest for their soul. Living in fear of what may happen tomorrow, living in fear of what the unknown is, living in fear of what the enemy can do, living in fear of what may happen to my marriage, my family, my kids, my home, my money, my house. God, I'm out of money. I don't know what to do. I can't cover the rent. God, my health is affected. What do I do? God, they're, they're laying off people at work. What do I do? And it leaves us in a place of uncertainty that produces a life full of fear. I wonder if there's people watching today or if there's people here today and you are living in fear. You want to believe God? You want to have faith in your soul? You want to worship with passion and fire? But the truth is you're scared of what may come. You're afraid of what the world says. You're anxious, you're tired, you're weary, and you're fearful. What you need is a secret place. What you need is a safe place that even though war may be around us, there can be peace in our soul. That even though chaos may fill the streets of our city, oh come on, grace can fill the alleys of your heart and of your soul. Come on, anybody thankful that in God we have a secret place? Anybody thankful that with God we have a place that we can go to? Oh, come on, it's a secret place. It's a confident place. I got good news for you. Today, if you have fear, God has solutions. Today, if you're anxious, he has peace. Today, if you're weighed down, he has mercy. Today, if you're confused, he has direction. Come on, we have a God that gives us freedom and peace and grace for our soul. Come on, anybody thankful that today, even though the world gives us bad news, I got a good God who gives me good news. I got good news for my soul. I got good news for my heart. I got good news for my mind. And though even I may be losing my health, I may be losing my family, I got good news on the inside and it can hold me up when the whole world is falling down. Come on, I got a secret place with God. You have a secret place with God. Have you visited lately? Have you spent time with God in that secret place? I want to tell you today, if you can trust Christ, you can have confidence in your life. Amen. If you can trust Jesus with your whole life, you can have confidence even in the most difficult of times. Do you trust him? There's people in here today, you've been robbed of your potential. You've been robbed of your future. You've been robbed of your calling. The enemy has lied to you because of uncertainty, because of what's happened in your past, because of things that have been thrown your way. But I'm here to prophesy over your life that you can dream again, that you can believe again, that fear has to go in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, begin to have faith again. In the name of Jesus, begin to speak again. Begin to proclaim again. There's healing in the name of Jesus. There's freedom in the name of Jesus. There's grace in the name of Jesus. He who's with me is greater than he who's against me. And if God be for me, nothing can stand against me all the days of my life. I wish I had three people that can give God a praise in this place. I got faith in my soul. I got confidence in my heart. Come on, somebody. We got a God who's for us. We got a God who's with us. If fear is going to shout in my soul, I'm going to shout louder with my praise. Fear is shutting people down, paralyzing them in their home, paralyzing them in their soul. And God's like, if you just came by the secret place. Psalm 91 is a beautiful psalm. It's an amazing psalm. We've looked at psalms written by different people and Possibly Solomon wrote Psalm 1, King David wrote Psalm 23 and Psalm 51. This one has no title, so we really don't know who the author is. But most Jewish scholars say that when a psalm had no title or no author ascribed to it, they said that usually the author was the one who wrote the psalm 
that came before it. So if we read Psalm 91, the Psalm that came before it is Psalm. You guys are mathematical geniuses. The first service was like 63. The one right before it, 90. Psalm 90 says that it was written by Moses. In fact, the heading says, written by Moses, the man of God. <laughs> That's powerful. That a man of God who lived thousands of years ago wrote something that we can read today. And so most scholars come to an agreement and say, Psalm 91 was written by Moses. I don't know about you, but that blows me away. The Moses I've heard about since I was little. The Moses I saw in Veggie Tales. <laughs> the Moses from the Prince of Egypt. <laughs> That Moses wrote something that I can read today. And so Moses writes Psalm 91 for me and for you today. Now, now Moses wrote from his experience with God. Moses writes this Psalm because he's encountered God. He's experienced God in such an incredible way that he has to tell us about it. Moses writes from a personal experience and gives us a spiritual revelation. Follow me now. Moses had a personal experience with God. And because of that personal experience, he writes a spiritual revelation for us. Are you with me? Yeah. What was Moses' personal experience? Moses saw miracles from God. Moses is in the desert. He's tending sheep. And what happens? He sees a burning bush and it speaks to him and it calls him and it says I'm going to use you to go and free my people go to Pharaoh and tell him can you say it like, like you're Moses today come on go to Pharaoh and tell him let my people go here you go Arnold Arnold the man of God <laughs> let my people go and so, so Moses goes right we know the story maybe you've heard of it you've seen it in movies Moses goes and he goes with Aaron and he goes up to Pharaoh he travels all the way back to Egypt and he tells, my, he tells Pharaoh hey let my people go and what does Pharaoh respond with no nah, I'm not going to let nobody go and so God's like okay I would deal with Pharaoh and he begins to send plagues on Egypt all different kind of plagues the water turns to blood. I, I think one of the worst ones is frogs. <laughs> like frogs everywhere. I don't know about you, but that, I, I believe the frogs are Satan's pet. That's his like, pet. And imagine a hope. Imagine this place right now filled with frogs to our ankles. Filled. Every chair, every floor, every part of the floor. You open the kitchen. You, I mean, you open the refrigerator, frogs jump out. You open a jar, frogs are jumping out. You go to lay down, there's frogs all over your bed. Like literally, frogs invaded all of Egypt, but it did not touch the people of God. Frogs were over there, but they weren't over here. There was divine protection on God's people. Are you following with me? So Moses is seeing this and saying, whoa, God brought plagues on earth, but not on us. We were protected. The last plague, the most horrible one, is the firstborn of Egypt would die in every family. And the angel of death passes by, and he tells the people of God to cover their doors with the blood of the lamb that they would sacrifice, and the angel would pass over, and death would not touch them. Death touched every other single family except them. So Moses has this experience with God. Moses has seen firsthand God's incredible supernatural power. Out of that personal experience, he writes a spiritual revelation. You cannot read, one preacher said, you cannot read Psalm 91 with carnal eyes. You have to read it with spiritual eyes. Because Moses isn't telling us that now he's going to do the same and not harm you and not bring disease and not bring none of that because we've lived long enough to know that you will get hurt, that disease does come. What he's telling us is as there was a physical enemy, but now we have a spiritual enemy. And the same way God protected the people of God from Pharaoh, now God protects his people from the evil one. 
In other words, he was preserving a people to form a nation, but now he's preserving a people to form a kingdom. Oh, come on. He's no longer into nations. That was an Old Testament example to say, if you follow me and obey me, look at this nation. This is how I'll bless you. This is how I'll protect you. This is how it was a physical thing in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, now there's no nation. It doesn't matter if you're a Jew or a Gentile, black or white, red or yellow. We are all precious in his sight. Now, if you're a believer, he who calls on the name of Jesus, oh, now you're spiritually protected and you're part of a kingdom that can't be shaken. Anybody grateful? I don't belong to a nation. I belong to a kingdom. I'm not just a citizen of the U.S. of A. I'm a citizen of the heaven. Oh, come on. A heavenly kingdom. That's where I'm from. And so even though you take away my citizenship, you can't take away my citizenship of heaven. Because God is forming now a spiritual kingdom that cannot be shaken, says the word. And so Moses, from his personal experience, says there's a spiritual revelation. It's almost like Moses had prophetic eyes to look into the future. Many said Moses wrote this psalm about Jesus Christ and how Jesus Christ would overcome death so that all of us can have life forever. So it's a powerful, powerful psalm. One, one preacher said, don't read it the way Satan reads it. Because Satan will come to you and say, if you serve God, no evil is supposed to happen to you. In fact, and I know I'm going off topic really quick, but in the book of Matthew, the devil comes up to Jesus in the desert. And where does he quote from? Psalm 91. Calvary College student right here in New York. The devil goes up to Jesus and he quotes, you, th you better know your Bible because the devil knows the Bible. You got to know your scripture. Like some of us are wasting time in tarot cards and horoscopes and Instagram and TikTok or talk tick. Can I tell you the devil's in the Bible because he's trying to know who he's trying to fight. So we got to know who we are going to fight and the victory we already have. So you got to get in scripture and memorize scripture. So the devil goes up to Jesus and he says, you know what he says? He says he'll send his angels concerning you. Throw yourself off this cliff. His angels will catch you. You're his son. And Jesus is like, do not test the Lord your God. Little did he know that he said, so you won't trip upon a stone and he'll send his angels to help you. Satan understood the text, but he did not understand the spirit behind the text. This is deep, but I need you to follow me really quick. When Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane, he was thrown on a stone. And the stone that could have tripped him is the stone that he gripped on as he prayed. And there the angels came and ministered to him. It's not that you won't fall on a stone. It's not that a stone won't come in your life. It's that when the stone comes, he'll send angels to minister to you and give you help and give you need. Are you with me? The stone will come, but you better hold on for life and know that he's with you. And even when the stone gets in the way, his angels will come and give you help. His angels will come and protect you. His angels will come and give you the power that you need to go forward. And the, the devil is a liar. Throw yourself off this cliff and his angels will catch you. This is in the cliff I'm supposed to throw myself off. There's another stone that's coming in the Garden of Gethsemane. You go to Israel today and there's a massive stone in the Garden of Gethsemane. And many believe that's the stone that Jesus threw himself on as he prayed. And he says, Father, if you can, pass this cup from me. But not my will be done, your will be done. The stone could have tripped him but God sent his angels to minister to him. You see how the devil twists scripture around? Yeah. And so Psalm 91 is powerful. You need, you need to read it with spiritual eyes. It's not a physical thing, it's a spiritual thing. Many call it a soldier's psalm because many soldiers in World War I and World War II memorized it. When they were in battle, they said, God, go with us. Because it has battle like terms in it it talks about the evil one the wicked one and so Moses is almost writing with a prophetic eye knowing that there is a spiritual war that is bigger than Pharaoh chasing you down the Red Sea in this life full of uncertainty in this life full of chaos one thing the devil is not after your physical body he'll ask God if if he can intervene and touch your physical body so that he can get to your spiritual body. He's not after your body, he's after your soul. 
he's known as the enemy of the soul and so in this life full of uncertainty worry fear chaos tragedy catastrophes what he wants is for you not to go to the secret place so that he can crush your soul and so Moses is writing and he's saying don't you give up have confidence have faith he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He's got your soul. He's got your soul. Don't you give up faith. Don't you let fear go in there. Don't give up hope on the God who called you. Because the one who called you, the one who started the good work in you, he'll be faithful to finish it. Don't you give up. Hold on a little longer. Hold on just a little bit more. I know it looks like your kids have gone crazy. I know I know it looks like your, your marriage is about to fall apart. I know it looks like the finances are all not there. I know it looks like your health is declining. But don't you give up faith because it's your soul. It's your soul that's protected. It's your soul that's holding. Come on, somebody. It's your soul. Hang on to him. Don't let go. Don't throw in the towel. There's a secret place where your soul can get some life. Psalm 91 is spiritual. It's not physical. Spiritual. Out of his physical experience, he writes a spiritual revelation. And he lets us know three things. We'll finish. And I, I went all over the place in this service. Just got, I needed to explain that a little bit further. But, but number one, it lets us know that we have a home we can rest in. Psalm 91, look at the first, look at the first two verses. Psalm, Psalm 91, verses 1 and 2. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. That's, that's another translation, the secret place. We first read from the ESV that said, he who dwells in the shelter. It's literally talking about the secret place. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I'll say of the Lord, he's my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. I love it. He gives us a secret place. In fact, he talks about the secret place a couple of times in Scripture. Look at Psalm chapter 27, verse 5. It says this. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion in the secret place. Somebody say secret place. In the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon the rock. There it goes again, the secret place. God has a secret. Where is this secret place? I want to know the secret place. Where is it? Is it in a home? Is it in a closet somewhere? Where do I go? I want to know where the secret place is. The whole world wants to know where the secret place is. In scripture, he lets us know where the secret place is. Psalm chapter 31. You shall hide them in the secret place of your there it is you want to know what the secret place is is the home that you have in God's heart it's in his presence oh come on it's when you lift up your hands and you begin to worship him that's the secret place it's where anxiety has to go oh come on worry can't chase you into the presence of God anxiety can't stay in the presence of God every fear has to go in the presence of God every demon has to run in the presence of God oh when I get in his presence I can't worry because I'm worshiping I I can't be anxious because I'm worshiping. I can't be weary because all oh, there's joy, there's grace, there's hope in his presence. That's the secret place. And so a lot of us, we're really good at getting into physical places, but bad at getting into spiritual places. We got our body in a building, but we don't, have, we don't know how to get our spirit in his presence. Why do we do worship? We don't do worship so that you can hear cool people sing and look at the lights and read the lyrics and then sings my soul. I love that one. They didn't put the dub behind the lyrics today. Where is it? Like, that's not why we sing. We sing so that we can get into his presence. He who dwells in the secret place, he who dwells in his presence every day. Psalm 91 lets us know we have a home to rest in. Augustine, a church father, many, many years ago said, every heart will be restless until they find rest in him. The world is looking for a secret place. What do we do when life gets chaotic? What do we do when life makes no sense? Go to the secret place. They run to Cleo, Miss Cleo. They run to horoscopes. They run to fortune tellers. They run to TikTok. They run to Instagram. They run to some somebody tell me, somebody, somebody tell me I need some hope, I need some peace. They'll run into relationships. They'll lay with people they're not supposed to lay with. They'll drink things they're not supposed to drink. We'll smoke things that we're not supposed to smoke because we're just trying to find an answer for our soul. But the only answer is found in the home. It's found in the secret place. It's found in the presence of God. Are you following me? And so today, if you've been running everywhere else but the secret place, there's a secret place for you. The Bible says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. It's a secret place. It's a home that you can rest in. Practice it. 
Wake up every morning 15 minutes before you usually do it. 15 minutes in his presence. You can put on a song or you can sing your own song to God. Get in his presence. I'm not talking about getting church. It's two different things. I'm not talking about getting in a building. A lot of people get in the building but never get in his presence. Get in his presence. Psalm 91 lets us know we have a home we can rest in. Number two, we have a helper we can trust in. Psalm 91 lets us know we have a helper. Somebody say helper. Helper we can trust in. Look at verses 3 and 4. Psalm 91, Moses writes this. Verses 3 and 4. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He'll cover you with his pinions and under his wings you'll find refuge for his faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. Look at that verse. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler. You don't need deliverance unless you're in trouble. So that verse never says you won't get in trouble. It just lets you know when you do get in trouble, you have a helper you can trust. He will deliver you from the snare of the fowler. In other words, the trap. Life will trap us with all kinds of things. Anxiety, fear, worry. When life traps you, you have somebody you can trust. The last verse, his faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. Under his wings you'll find refuge. He'll cover you. He'll cover you. This world may trap my body, but they cannot trap my spirit. Are you hearing me? Disease and sickness may touch your body, but it cannot touch your spirit. Calamity may come and touch your mind, but it cannot touch your spirit. Hard times will come. Life is full of suffering. Life is difficult. But Psalm 91 lets us know we have a secret place that we can go to, and there we have a helper that we can trust. Where is your confidence? Where is your confidence? So many of us put confidence in the wrong thing. Psalm 91 corrects our confidence. Me and Dana were youth pastors here for two and a half years, years ago, before the best youth pastors on the planet, Phil and Danny, took over. But we were youth pastors. And I remember sometimes coming in on a Friday, and you would see people's, like, attitude change. Like, like you know, people's heart change. Like, this couple got together. They started dating. They were the happiest people on earth. You were walking on a Friday, like, how you doing? I'm great. Great. Amazing. What happened? I'm in love, love. I found the one. <laughs> really? Who is it? My sugar foot. <laughs> my sugar foot, my honey boo. It's amazing, right? A week later, you would walk in, and because their sugar foot would break up with them, they were in like shambles. <laughs> like, hey, what happened? A week ago, everything was good just a week ago. <laughs> he broke up with me. <laughs> My life is over. It's like, don't worry. You'll find like two or three or more of those. You got to go through some scumbags before you find a real good one, right? <laughs> don't worry. Everything's going to be all right. God was going to bring you somebody good. Like, it's not the end of the world. But because your confidence is in the wrong place, your heart will melt. A lot of us will look at a 14-year-old like that and we'll laugh. and like, oh, you'll be okay. But we do the same thing as adults. You put your confidence on a green dollar bill. And everything's good because you got the house, you got the car, life is going amazing, you got the raise, you got the promote. Can you praise God when you get laid off? Can you praise God when Wall Street crashes? Can you praise God when your portfolio is going down and when business is not making no sense? Can you praise God through a foreclosure? Can you praise God in a hospital bed? Can you praise God when life makes no sense? Can you praise God when you're in the valley? Can you praise God through a divorce? Can you praise God when your kids have lost their mind? Can you praise God when life is hard and all of the arrows are flying against? I will not be afraid of the arrows that fly by night or the arrows that fly during the day. My trust is in him I have a helper I can trust come on get your confidence in the right place can I get an amen the band come up we'll finish with this number one we got a home we can rest in number two we got a helper we can trust and number three we'll finish with this we have a hope to live in Psalm 91 lets us know you have a hope to live in oh I love I love Psalm 91 because it puts your confidence in the right place and it puts your hope in the right place. Psalm 91 does not mean security for this life. I love it. We can quote it. We can put it on coffee mugs, put it on your freezers, 
cubicles, the way it is all over the place. But it does not mean that you will not get COVID-19. What it does mean is that even if COVID-19 comes and takes my body, it could not touch my soul. Are you with me? I have a hope to live in. If this world is all you have, your hope is very limited. If this physical life is all you have, you're, you'll be hopeless in a moment. Life is but a vapor. If money, relationships, good vacations, awesome things that this world has to offer, if that's all you are holding on to, you'll be out of hope really fast. But look what God says in the last few verses, verses 14 through 16, because he holds fast to me in love. In the Hebrew, it literally means somebody that is holding on for dear life. I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I'll answer him. I'll be with him in trouble. I'll rescue him and honor him. With a long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. That's why the book of Thessalonians says, we mourn, but we mourn differently than the world mourns. Because people that don't know God and don't know this long life that God gives us, when they lose their physical life, they think this physical life is all there is. And so you mourn because I'm never going to see so-and-so and I only got to know them for 50 years, 60 years, 80 years, 90 years if we're blessed. And once this life is over, it's done. I have no hope to ever see that person again. But when you got a secret place, when you dwell underneath the shadow of the Almighty, and you know that He promises to rescue you, He promises to protect you, you also know He promised to give you a long life. That means even if this physical life were to end a little shorter, there's another life that I'm going to to dwell in paradise forever and ever and ever and ever. Because He promised that with long life, He will satisfy me. And so I have hope. I have hope, though I may lose my body, though I may lose my mind, though I may lose my house, though I may lose my money, though I may lose my relationship, though I may lose my family, I have hope. Because my hope is not in this world, it's in the kingdom that's unshakable. I'll finish with this, in 1876, in 1876 there was a massive, massive pestilence happening in London. London was completely inundated with this disease and it was getting everybody. 1876, there was a young preacher that had just started preaching in London and he went by the name Charles Spurgeon. Very young, anointed, gifted. And Charles Spurgeon, as a young preacher, didn't know what to do. He, he actually grew tired and weary because he said every single day he would get a call from somebody that was sick and dying or somebody that died, somebody whose family member died, and he would travel the streets of London every single day visiting house after house, funeral home after funeral home, and he was tired and weary, and many in his church were dying. London was completely filled with death. One day he said he's walking down the streets of London and he says if this continues like this, I myself may die because my heart is heavy and my mind is burdened. Charles Spurgeon was about to literally give up. God, I'm done. And as he's walking down London one day, thinking this, tired, weary, he looks to a window of a store and it was a shoemaker who had grabbed Psalm 91. And he had grabbed verses 9 and 10. He had written them down on a piece of paper and he had put it up against the window. And the young pastor, Charles Spurgeon, is going down the street and he looks to the window and he sees Psalm 91. And he says, it's at that moment that Psalm 91 changed his life forever. He said the verses leaped out from the window into his heart. They gripped him and they put new faith on the inside of him. And he realized, though many are dying and though I myself may die, 
my spiritual life will never be touched by this disease and I will dwell with him forever and he said he got a confidence in his soul in fact toward the end of his life he remembers Psalm 91 and this is what he said about Psalm 91 it is impossible that any ill should happen to the man who is beloved of the Lord the most crushing calamity can only shorten his journey and hasten him to his reward ill to him is not ill but only good in a mysterious form losses enrich him sickness is his medicine reproach is his honor and death is his gain Charles Spurgeon said no evil in the strict sense of the word can happen to him for everything is overruled for good happy is he who is such in a case he is secure where others are in peril he lives where others die come on those are some powerful words he says I have a security for my soul it doesn't matter what happens on this side of eternity it doesn't matter what happens to my body or yours oh come on we, we know that all things work out for the good of those who love him he's in control he loves you run to the secret place in that secret place there's grace in that secret place there's love in that secret place there's mercy run to the secret place today in that secret place the bible says we have a hope that is an anchor to our soul this world will want to move everything from you including your own soul but in him we have an anchor for the soul I want us to stand up on our feet all across this place. Father, we thank you for the secret place. We thank you for that safe place that we can go to. Thank you for the shelter of the Almighty. Thank you for the shadow of your wings. When this world is in chaos, when everybody's losing their mind, you've got my soul. You've got my soul. My life is in your hands. How great thou art. How great thou art. Today we can sing a little louder. And today we can proclaim a little stronger because we know Psalm 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High will abide under the shadow of your wings. And so though my heart and my flesh may fail me, you're my portion forever. Hallelujah. 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 Then sings my soul. great you are God come on get into the secret place why don't we sing this out then sings my soul sing it with all you God and give him some praise today come on with hands lifted father we worship you we thank you ah uh -huh, thank you that we can meet you in the secret place we're not here for a performance we're not here for a concert we're not here to read lyrics off the screen we're here to meet with you thank you Jesus that we can with lifted hands surrender to you. You love for us to raise our hands to you. Your word says, lift up holy hands before him. And so today we worship you. We thank you for the secret place. We thank you for the safe haven that we have in you, in your presence. And so today, more than in a church building, we want to get in your presence. We're going to get with you, God. Help those that are hurting. Free those that are heavy. 
God, I pray for every person that's anxious, stressed, worried, living in fear, trapped in their mind, burdened in their soul. I pray for freedom right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, be free. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, be free. Be free in your mind, be free in your body, be free in your soul. Father, any person that's been living in fear, trapped, lied to. Psalm 91 says that the enemy, the lion, the serpent is under our feet. The roaring lion, the lying serpent is under our feet. In Jesus' name, I pray for healing of the mind, healing of the soul, healing of the heart. Thank you that you set us free today. Thank you for healing. Thank you for healing. Thank you, Jesus. Set us free. Spirit of fear, we rebuke you in the name of Jesus. You have no place in our mind, in our life. We are under the shelter of the Most High. Holy Spirit, minister, set free, heal, deliver. Right now in the name of Jesus, I ask you, Lord, that by your grace and by your mercy, you begin to heal people right now. Somebody suffering of discouragement for the last few months, it's been depression in Jesus' name, be healed. In Jesus' name, come out of that dark place. In the name of Jesus, let the light of Jesus shine in your, in your soul. Let it shine in your mind. Let it shine in your heart. Come out in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody with a physical illness right now, in the name of Jesus, begin to pray. I'm believing for healing right now, in the name of Jesus. Whether it's a migraine, whether it's back pain, whether it's bad knees, he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask, think, or imagine. If you're sick in this place, why don't you put your hands wherever it is that you're hurting. Maybe it's your neck, your knee. Maybe it's your lungs, your heart, your blood pressure. In Jesus' mighty name, Father, I pray for healing right now of every physical illness in this place. Father, I pray for healing in the name of Jesus. You are the God that heals us of every single one of our diseases. Holy Spirit, I pray that you minister. I pray that you heal. I pray that you bring that blood pressure low. I pray that that asthma has to go in the name of Jesus. I pray that cancer has to go in the name of Jesus. Every tumor has to disintegrate by the mighty blood of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for healing of the mind, healing of the body, healing of the soul, Father. We thank you for healing today. We speak healing in the name of Jesus. Jesus, you could just say the word like the centurion said, and we'll be healed. I pray for anybody with any kind of addiction or bondage in their life, emotional attachments to unhealthy things, addictions, bondages, in Jesus' name, be set free. In the name of Jesus, be set free. If you're watching online, be set free. You're addicted to cigarettes. You're, addi you're addicted to weed. You're addicted to alcohol. In the name of Jesus, put that thing down. Throw it down. Be set free. He who the sun sets free is free indeed. You're no longer a slave to that thing. Be set free in the name of Jesus. There's freedom. There's freedom in the house of God. There's freedom in the secret place. There's healing in the secret place. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. You're a good God. You love us. You're for us. You're with us. Thank you, Jesus, for your love. With every eye closed and every head bowed, we're leaving just in two more minutes. We're leaving right now. But if you're here today and you don't know Jesus, you walked in and you feel far from God, you feel like God wants nothing to do with you, I want to tell you he loves you so much. Whether you're in here in this building or you're watching online, if you feel far from God, you're saying God possibly loves other people in this building, but he can't love me. I want to tell you, he loves you. He loves you more than you could imagine. It doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter what you've done. He loves you. The Bible says that God loves us, but all of us are sinners. I'm a sinner. You're a sinner. We've all sinned. We've all failed. We've all done things we're not proud of. We've all lied, cheated, stole, thought wrong, said wrong. And the Bible says that our sin separates us from God. God loves us, 
because he's a God of love, but he's also a God of justice. And so he has to deal with sin. So sin separates us from God the Father. But God in his love and his mercy sent his son Jesus. Jesus came and he grabbed all of my sin, your sin. Every single wrong thing we've done, the ones people know about, the ones people don't know about. Every single sin, every single offense, Jesus carried it on his shoulders. He went up on a cross and he died for our sins. Last week we talked about the penalty of sin, the consequences of sin is death. Sin is very serious. More than physical death is spiritual death. And Jesus says, I'll pay the price for the sin so that you can have life and life forevermore. Jesus went up on a cross at Calvary. He gave up his life on that cross. He died. They put him down in a grave. He was dead for three days. But after three days, Jesus resurrected from the dead. He defeated sin and death so that you and I can have freedom, life, and forgiveness today. With every eye closed, with every head bowed. Whether you're in here or watching online, if you say, Alex, I need this. I need this right now. I need forgiveness. I know I've done wrong. But I need a relationship with God. I'm, I'm tired of the way I'm living. I'm tired of what I've done. I'm tired of carrying around sin and shame. Today, I want to give my life to Jesus. Today, I want, I want forgiveness. Today, I want to be saved. The Bible says if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. But every eye closed, every head bowed. Come on, as the whole church is praying. I'm going to count to three in a moment. If that's you, if you're saying, Alex, I need forgiveness, at the count of three, you raise your hand. I'm not going to call you out, embarrass you, none of that. Every eye closed, everybody praying. But if that's you, I want to see who I'm praying for. Hold it up for a second or two, then you can put it right back down. If that's you, you're saying, I need a relationship with God. I need forgiveness today, today, today. Don't wait until tomorrow. The Bible says tomorrow's promise for no man. Today, you raise up your hand. One, two, three. Raise up your hand as high as you can, as high as you can. Amazing. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You and you and you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amazing. Amazing. It's the best move you can make. Amazing. Amazing. Hands raised up everywhere. If you're online, if you're watching from home, from work, wherever you're at, you raise it up. He sees you right there. You can put your hands down. Let's, let's say this prayer together. I'm going to lead you in this simple prayer, but you can talk to God any place, anywhere, in your own language, in your own words. I'm just leading us in this first one, which is putting our faith and our trust in him. In fact, let's all say this together. Repeat after me. Say, Father. Come on, out loud together in one voice, praying together. Say, Father, thank you for today. Thank you for this opportunity. Today, I admit that I'm a sinner and that my sin separates me from you. Jesus, I believe you're the son of God, that you died for my sins and on the third day, you resurrected come into my life be my lord and be my savior from today on i'm forgiven i'm saved and i'm healed in jesus name amen amen and amen come on amazing i apologize we went a few minutes over but hands went up all over this place and i'm sure online as well we love you if you raise your hand we have a bible for you outside we have some tents are called the connect tent somebody just wants to high five you and give you this free free bible the book of psalms is in here which is a book that we're reading through and we want to give it to you absolutely free go by they're just going to give it to you take it home this book is going to bless your life i know you probably have a bible at home this one's better it just has a lot of cool notes on the side to help you understand what you're reading in fact if you're watching online text us we'll mail one out to you absolutely free one more time can we give everybody a big hand that made that decision thank you honey. come on we got a secret place anybody thankful for the shelter of the most high come on this week i pray that you would make the shelter your habitation place and you'll get up in early in the morning and go to that shelter late at night you'll go to that secret place come on turn to your neighbor and tell them i got a secret place he's with me he's with you in Jesus' name. Pray you have an amazing week. Next Sunday is 4th of July. and We're going to have one service only. This place might be packed. and We literally want people to go out and be the light of the world. And um, I know. I know a lot of people want to come to church and all that. But we want people to rest, be with friends and family, and be a light there. And bring them with you the following Sunday. So next week, 10 a.m., we're going to have a special service. It's going to be really, really cool. So let's lift up our hands. Let's thank God for today as we leave this place. Father, we thank you. We love you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for that secret place. Thank you that we have a home in you, that we have a helper in you, and that we have hope in you. Go before us this week. God, may you have mercy and grace in our life. 
Let your glory shine upon our face. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, all of God's people say it.